Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today. I'm having to deal with a couple little technical issues, so if I sound a little different, um, you'll know why. I may have to adjust this a little bit. Let me try that right there. <clears throat> I'm in a different place, different location. As a matter of fact, at the time of our recording right now, this is January the 1st, 2018. I know most of y'all will probably listen to this <clears throat> a little later. But uh, anyway, Happy New Year to you. We're going to pick up uh, examining the scripture where we've been looking of late. And that's in First Thessalonians. Okay, First Thessalonians, we're at the second chapter right now. And we're seeing some things uh, that the Spirit has told uh, the body of Christ here uh, through Paul. And Paul was just encouraging them and reminding them how uh, uh, the the gospel had come to them and what Paul had been through, how he had labored over them, worked night and day, he and his entourage, and how the Thessalonians were actually the witnesses to how that Paul and his group had lived devoutly before them, how they had been upright and blameless. And so he was encouraging them to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Uh, that they had been called by, and that God had called them into His own kingdom, into His own glory. So in First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen, uh, let's start right there. He says, "For this reason," and that's the reason I wanted to give a little recap right there. For this reason, because of what He said in the first chapter, what He said at this point in time, what He has reminded them of uh, that had occurred in their lives, how they had turned from false idols to the real God. For this reason. He says in verse 13, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. That is an amazing, amazing verse right there that gives us such insight into what the gospel is and how the gospel is communicated, who we are as the body of Christ, how you become a believer. There's so many things. So just listen to this again. He says, we thank God for this because of what's happened in your life, that you received the word of God, which they had heard from them. And you accepted that word, not as the word of men, but what it really is. The Word of God. This is the reason that it is so important to teach, to preach, to speak, to communicate the Word of God. Now, I'm not talking about standing up and thumping somebody over the head with a Bible and saying you have to worship this Bible. No, I'm talking about the Word of God uh, that says that Jesus Christ is Messiah, the gospel message. Too often, uh, people get distracted by things. The sad state of affairs is this. The true word of the Lord is not really communicated anymore. When it is, we think it's supposed to be done by one individual from a pulpit at a particular time, once or twice or three times during a week. And then that's it. And nothing could be further from the truth. If you are a true believer in the Most High God, if you're truly saved, then you are the vessel by which the Lord wants to release His Word. He wants to release the saving power of the of, of God through you to other people. Now notice what he says right here. He's given thanks because they had received this word and accepted it, not as the word of men. And so it wasn't some uh, brilliant chicanery of the language that Paul used to convince people. He says, no, you received it of, as the word of God, and since you believed it, This Word of God is performing its work in you. It performs a work in you. The very Word of God itself, I think about that, the Word that was communicated, and remember how Paul communicated that Word. He came through and he went to the synagogues and he reasoned from the Scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. Because in the Scriptures, and that would have been the Old Testament to them, he reasoned with them and showed how that the Messiah would die and that he would be buried and he would be raised again from the dead. We are to do likewise. We are to be such a vessel of the Word of God that when people hear and the Spirit moves upon them, that they believe and then it performs its work. Now, verse 14 says this, 
For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. So he's saying, you believe, and so you imitated those that are back at the mother area, okay? For you also endured the same sufferings at the hand of your own countrymen, even as did the Jews. He said the same way that the Jews who believe at the beginning experienced suffering from their own countrymen, from their fellow Jews, y'all have done the same thing. You believe you have endured sufferings now. And then what kind of sufferings? Well, verse 15 tells us it continues to sin us. Uh, even as did uh, they from the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. So he's saying in the same way that the Jews killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and those who believe, they drove us out of Thessalonica. Okay, the same thing has happened. So he says, these are not pleasing to God, but are hostile to all men. Then verse 16, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved with the result that they always fill up the measure of their sins. But wrath has come upon them to the utmost. <laughs> so Paul was saying this, hey, you became imitators of the churches in Judea because in the same way that they suffered, you have suffered because the fellow countrymen have attacked you. They actually killed the Lord Jesus Christ and the prophets. In Thessalonica, they drove us out. This is not pleasing to God, not pleasing to God at all. They were hindering us from speaking forth the truth of the gospel to the Gentiles. He's letting them know this, that God's wrath has come upon them to the utmost. That's an interesting little phrase. The wrath has come upon them. The wrath will come upon them if they don't repent. So anyway, Paul is encouraging them, letting them know, hey, this stuff that's coming against you, same thing has happened to those in Judea. It happened to you. I've got news for you folks. It's happening to us, and it will happen to us in even, in even a greater measure if you're a true believer. We like to think in the Western world, well, that won't happen. It is already happening, folks, and it's growing in intensity. I think it's going to be an amazing uh, couple of two or three years. Watch what happens to those who are truly of the faith. Are you prepared? We need to be prepared within the Spirit for days yet to come. Anyway, I'm Dale. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.